Hey guys, welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the play message to play a continuous series of messages in either a form of audio file or a text to speech. Now let's go ahead and continue with the new script. We will call this VBC play message script. Now the goal of the play message, so right here, play message, is different than what the goal of the music, uh, play music is. Typically play music is something that you want to play a pre-recorded message like welcome greeting, asking the customer to enter some password, etc. But the play message plays an uninterruptible message to the caller. Typically you may want to say your account balance is $5 or you may want to play back some sort of announcement, maybe some uh, advertising, depending on the type of environment that you have. Now you can use the play message activity with or without the text to speech capability enabled. You can simply put a, a audio file in a, up to five audio files that you want to play in a series. Now you can configure an error handling path. So in case if one of the um, error, uh, music file cannot play, you can take certain actions. In the play music, uh, sorry, play message rather than play music, I'm gonna go and close the play music. You can, you have the options to play a prompt or you can use text to speech, right? So if I don't, by default, text to speech is disabled. So in this scenario, what's gonna happen is you're gonna play a series of messages, right? So you can say, welcome to voice bootcamp and then you can add audio file, then you play the company IVR, right? Simple messages that. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this, and then I will end the script. Uh, let's uh, do a, after this, let's connect the call to queue, queue to agent, and I'm gonna choose a queue, no, not the agent, sorry, queue to, queue to, queue contact. Uh, it's going to connect to sales queue and end the call. So let's go ahead and end the call. And after play the message, it's going to try to connect. And then we're going to also end the calls for here as well. So the play message is going to say welcome. Then it's going to play the company IVR and it's gonna queue the call to sales queue. Uh, nothing else we're going to do at this moment, and the flow. In the event, you do have some addition, uh, event flow that you do need to uh, end, uh, disconnect or end. Now, unfortunately, you're gonna to have to do this for each individual separately. Unfortunately, each individual event has to be disconnected one, one at a time. It's not like you can all point them, point them to the same event it will give you a error message. So I'm gonna connect. Like this event are like as if they're running independently, so therefore treat them as a separate entity. Okay. So now going back to the main flow, um, I'm gonna validate and see if there's an error. So right now there is no error. Yes, there is a recommendation. I'm not gonna worry about that and I'm gonna publish this. Now, because this is a new script, I will have to change my uh, entry point mapping in my routing strategy. So this VP, uh, well, it's already mapped to that. I have to go to the routing strategy and change my uh, script for voice EP. We will choose the help desk messages. All right, so let's get let's test a call. Well, what, what our objective is to we're going to hear a call. Now I'm going to log in as an agent. So give me a sec. So I'm going to log into desktop and with a user account. So I'm going to log in as my agent one. And I'm going to use my other telephone number.
So this is my agent. I'm gonna move that into a different monitor just for, I mean, we don't, we don't really need to worry about that at this moment. And going back to my flow, uh, let's uh, test the call. Thank you for calling Cisco Systems. For please sales, please press one. For technical support, please press two. For contract support, please press three. For partner support, please press four. For the operator, please press zero. So the call goes to the queue. Um, I believe that user, uh, it goes to the queue. That user that I've logged in as admin one may not be in that right queue. Uh, it probably is in a different queue right now. Um, at least we saw the call goes to queue. That's the key part right now. Now let's say I want to add more messages, right? So instead of using uh, a, a particular prompt, after the welcome, I want to add, let's say, a, a, prompt, a, a prompt variable. So let's create a prompt, prompt variable. So first of all, I need to know the prompt. I'm gonna copy file. And let's say I want to use product IVR. Okay. I want to create, first I'm gonna create a variable. So right here, I'm gonna create a flow variable. So you click on this gray area, add a flow variable. Let's call this my uh, IVR prompt. And it's gonna contain a value called product menu. It's gonna be string type and save. Now we're going to play this particular variable and along with my welcome message. So this is my welcome. So it's going to, uh, it's going to play the welcome prompt. Instead of playing another audio file, we're going to say uh, add a prompt. So this is where we're going to provide the value of the variable. So it's going to be my IVR prompt. I believe that was the value. So you got to put them in a quotation. Keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to work. And I, and after that, I can play something else. So let's just start, let's start with that first, and then see where where we, where we go. Publish it and redial. That's my product IPR. So as you can see, I can play a static prompt plus a variable which can contain the data. Now, what happened if I, instead of prompt name, I want to play something else. Let's say I wanna collect something, I wanna play it back. So for now, to keep life simple, let's see if the text to speech is going to work. So we're gonna go back to our variable double edit that instead of the file name let's see if we type one two three one two three one two three four five okay the value i want to see if it's going to play that so technically if you don't enable text to speech is it going to be able to announce that message to you okay so return to the flow Cisco so it simply says thank you for Cisco system. But in the IVR, the variable, which contains a value one, two, three, four, five, it's not going to announce anything. Okay, so you have to supply the value in a form of uh, uh, variable. So we can choose uh, text to speech, you can enable the text to speech. And we're going to use a Google text to speech server output variable. We're going to choose the default language. Um, by default, I believe is EN. Uh, we're going to choose EN dash USD. That's the standard in uh, mostly. Or you can supply that with your variable name. So you can also put the variable name if you want to. Okay. Now the audio file, we're going to play an IVR, welcome to voice bootcamp. And now we're gonna say add a text. 
we're going to say uh, you are about to hear. That's going to be an announcement. And then we're going to add an audio file, product IVR. And we're going to play the product IVR after this, product menu. So, oops, what happened? Welcome, add a text you are about to hear. Product IVR, okay? And then we're going to play the product prompt. Menu. And then after that, we're going to go to the queue. So let's go and publish that. You are about to hear product IVR for unified communication. Okay. So it's a combination of uh, audio pre recorded audio file plus your uh, text to speech plus your uh, uh, another pre recorded audio file. But what if I want to say, yeah, uh, let's say uh, we want to play <laughs> instead of the product IVR, we're going to say you are being connected to. Okay, now we want to provide maybe a, a, I don't know, name of the queue. Can we do that? Let's see. I'm going to find out the name of the queue if we can. Agent offer. Okay, so I don't think much. Okay, I'm going to copy this queue contact queue ID. See if it's we're going to say that you are about to you're about you're being connected to view id and then we're going to put the variable okay now the variable has to be done in this sense and see what happens so i'm going to put that in a notepad so that you can see what's going on you are being connected to queue id and then whatever the queue id the system identified now it may not identify it because the queue id will come after okay uh or you can actually, you know what? We can play this. You call came from, you can say that the call, the caller ID is, and then we put this. That also works fine. If you want to announce the caller ID and you can play the caller ID. So let's go ahead and try this out. Plus one six four seven nine one four five zero two two. Okay, so it did play the caller ID, but instead of playing as a phone number, it just simply read out your uh, uh, what do you call text. So this is basically what the text to speech server can do. You can play all sorts of messages you can, uh, back to the user. You can collect the digit and read it out back using the text-to-speech. Now we're using the Google text-to-speech, so keep that in mind. Um, you will be, let's say, I don't know if there is any billing inquired for this. Yeah, that's not the one. So there are a couple of, so as you can see, there are three requests. Four requests for Dialogflow API, three requests came in on my Google uh, text-to-speech, and you should be able to go to the text-to-speech and see if there is any cost inquired for you. Be careful, like I said, it, although you're not going to be charged, Google is quite fr friendly about that, but you don't want to get a bill suddenly, a $3,000 bill on your account, and then you're going to blame me for that. So this is a disclaimer. Make sure you pay attention to that. All right, so you see what the play messages does is it can play dynamic value. It can play a pre-recorded audio. Uh, you got your output voice, which enables you to configure a custom language and a language setting for the agent. So let's say if I, what happened if I change this to, I don't know, let's see, France. France, okay, let's see what's gonna happen, if, if it anything. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm gonna play. So what I'm expecting, the pre-recorded audio to be continued to be English, but what's gonna to happen to text-to-speech server? 
Thank you for calling Cisco Systems. It is telling me a language that I don't understand, although I'm living like six hours away from it, Montreal. All right, so let's see if I were to change this to, I don't know, what else language we have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dutch. You can change it to Dutch. Maybe, I don't know what that is. Maybe Dutch, maybe something else. If any of you guys know what it is, please let me know. Thank you for calling Cisco Systems. The caller ID is plus 1647 Okay, so, it, so output voice will change your language that you want. Now you can supply that language using the global variable called global underscore voice name, or you can change it to hard coded to whatever value you want. So I'm going to change it to e back to English dash US D. Okay, so hopefully you have a rough idea now how to use the play message for various ways to play back your data. In the subsequent uh, lab, I'll show you how to pull data from database, supply that information to play message, and then use the text to speech to announce that information back. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.